get dressed and brush your teeth. It's time for your weekly Vanguard podcast, brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com slash nexus at night. God, that was so dumb. Uh, I, I didn't know what you were going for there, honestly. That was bad. I was trying to go for, like, your mom waking you up. Anyway, I'm Atlas. I'm Matt. I'm Root Beer. And uh, thanks to uh, thanks to our patrons, our $10 patrons, Darren, Cole, and Josh. Uh, today we're doing uh, a set review of uh, DBT02, A Brush with the Legends. Um, when you said DBT, I thought it was a mistake, but no, you're no, right. No, I'm quite accurate, I assure you, unfortunately. I hate it. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. Why do they have to rhyme all the letters, too? GBT, VBT. GV, yeah, yeah it's, it's, just, it's awful. Yeah. They're like, we're, uh, we're going to run out of reboots if we keep having to rhyme letters. Then. No, I think in English, a lot of the letters end in an E sound, right? So it's just like, whatever. Yeah. I guess the vowels are kind of your only... Yeah, next you do Z, you know, yeah. whatever. V, you still have um, B, BBT. Yeah. CBT. CBT, yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. <laughs> Um, but, uh, to those who haven't heard an episode like this before, uh, what we do is we go through the high rarity stuff all the way down through the double R's and then any commons or rares that interest us, uh, we're all taking turns based off of the nations. So who's got Dragon Empire again? Uh, I do. So we'll start with, um, the, uh, the most your friend wonderful mine, card. Dragonic Overlord. Again. Uh, well... We'll, we'll get to it. I'll just read mm. it off first. So it's, uh, you know, it is a Persona... It is a great three, so that means it has Persona. I think all the great threes have Persona Red, so we don't need to say that yep. every time. Yeah, so it's a great three. It has a continuous on van or rear, that during the battle of this attack to rear guard, your opponent can all ca- cannot call cards from their hand to guard circle. At all. Yep, so it, it is unguardable on from hand on rear, guard, on rear guard attacks. And then it has an auto on vanguard circle once per turn. When its attack hits anything you can counter blast one discard a card from your hand stand this unit and it gets drive minus one gee i feel like i've heard that second skill before i think this card is bad bad is like just not worth the, the yeah scratch. I, don't think card is worth it. I think i and we'll talk more about like why i think it's not great i think um yeah i, I think this card's uh i don't really know it it, it discarding a card feels really bad um, because like if you're guaranteeing the restand by attacking rear guard, you're kind of already like losing a damage. Like I don't really like either. It shouldn't lose twin drive or shouldn't discard a card. It feels awkward that it does. Uh, so mm. it's cool that it can uh bully rear guards on. It's cool mm. that it has a rear guard skill. Yeah, so you I can. I don't, really, I don't really like it. You can use it in anything, which is cool mm-hmm. for that, yeah. if nothing else. Um. Of course, you've you've heard our opinion of them bringing these back. We're not too uh, jazzed well, on it. I'm glad they're toned down for sure. I, mean, uh, I just dislike that. You know, or I mean, it's like Draconic Overlord is like you know supposed to be like a really big card, right? This card was insane, and when it was first printed, it was fine. In V, I mean, this is basically the same as V. Yeah. But like, like it's it, I don't know, it feels worse here. Well, oh, because well, it doesn't have the plus ten k skill anymore. Oh sure. Oh, that's true, huh? Well, yeah, be, so because it has that guaranteed hit thing. They're like, why would we need to? Dot dot dot. Right. So. Um, yeah. So I'm not um, I'm not uh, too uh, excited about this card. It's cool. Uh, I like Draconic Overlord. Draconic Overlord's a cool archetype. Uh, Usually there's a the something Dragonic Overlord the well in the that's only true for the later iterations like if we ever get like the end or the great or the whatever right yeah the cross <laughs> yeah yeah so it's only when they have like some other epithet <clears throat> attached to their name right I'm still waiting for the day that they uh, release a Dragonic Overlord not this shit again <laughs> but yeah uh, I think the card's pretty whatever I don't know how you all feel about it. I mean, I've made my opinion on it very clear with my very enthusiastic reading of its card text. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> right, let's talk about a card that I uh, like a little more. Uh, Virena er- uh, Erger. Er- 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 whatever. Erger? Erger, er- Erger. yeah, whatever. I I'm not going to say this word. Okay. Uh, so it is a great two uh, overdress unit, uh, obviously on Trickstar. Um, and it has an effect in hand at the end of the battle that your trick star attacked a vanguard. 
If your Vanguard is Nirvana, you can Soul Blast 2 and overdress this on top of the Trickstar as Stand and Counter Charge 1. So this is a super uh, cool skill, uh, generating an extra attack off a... Uh, we'll talk about this Trickstar attack later, but yeah, very important. And then a Continuous on Rear Guard, and guard, on rear guard Circle and Guard Circle. If it's in the overdress state, it gets power plus 10,000, shield plus 10,000, and it's act upon opponent's turn. So it's going to be a 20k rear guard. It's going to be pretty hard to bully. And, you know, being a 15k intercept is super nice, especially out of a deck like Nirvana, which typically has some defensive problems. I yep. like it. I, I generally agree with that. Like, it's like, I don't know if I want to say it's completely better than Valiant. I feel like it probably is. But, like, the Soul Blast 2 part is a little bit awkward. I don't, mm, I don't, don't know how... You don't too much in Overdr the Overdress deck. Yeah. But I it's going to be hard to do it multiple times. Yeah, I guess with some other cards we'll see later that might be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there, I think there are is... definitely some, uh, some cards that are going to be really important for kind of boosting up your um, uh, Trickstar attack, too. So... Uh, and we'll talk about those uh, toward the end. So, uh, with this and the original Virena and Arcs and uh, whatever the other one was, the the cover card from last set, what's like the breakdown of uh, your overdress? So you're always going to play four Arcs. Okay. Yeah, uh, absolutely four you'll Arcs. You'll probably play like a four of this card, and mm -hmm. then like the, uh, the original Virena, you want to play as few copies as you can get away with. I so would probably like, just play the one. If you could play the one and not, like, draw it, that'd be mm -hmm. really good. Honestly, yeah. I just discard the original Virena all the time. Yeah. Like, the only reason you would even play the one is just so you can grab something off of the ride, le uh, your ride line, right? Yeah, so it's uh, yeah. so it's a, uh, a wash instead of a ride Also the soul lust out the uh, trick star you yeah. start on. Right. I cause... mean, you can always just soul blast and like not grab anything. Yeah, but that. But I feel like if you're soul blasting, you might like you might as well grab a card. Mm-hmm. Since right. you can just discard the Firena you search to ride up to or to to get call the Trickstar back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, definitely run as few original Varinas as possible. Preferably just have the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Completely agree. And then, uh, numbers of Valiant. I'm. Not a hundred percent sure about because like, arcs after... card goes down for sure. Yeah, like you definitely don't run four, maybe two because like after you get the draw, arcs just kind of sits there. It is still a twenty k rear guard with Nirvana, but like if you can make it bigger by just calling over it with Valiant, I don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah, Counterboss two draw one draw Counterboss one draw two is just good value. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I would like to see another rearguard way of calling Trickstar as well. Uh, you know, things that would be nice. Yep. <laughs> oh, just like to either search it or just waste it. No, call it from get... drop specifically. Oh, I mean, you have... This Nirvana. is foreshadowing. Oh. <laughs> uh, thanks. Oversimplified. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I like Urger. Don't really like Dio. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I wish there. Dragonic Overlord just did something else. Same. I, I wish I got, like, a bunch more power, did something. I like, didn't discard a card, like, you know, gain oh. something somewhere. I feel like the card is just, uh... Mm, medium? Mis yeah, like, <laughs> medium minus, really. Hey, there it is. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's a... It's like a trial deck card that they shoved into mm -hmm. a triple R spot. Correct. And that's the first card in the set too you're there so mm -hmm. like that's a statement almost yeah it's not the yeah. cover card but you know whatever no but it might as well be um also when you said dio in my brain like i know it, it was an acronym but my brain imagined dio from jojo so thanks for that <laughs> oh I, I can't wait to start talking about od dio oh or God. dio <laughs> it's gonna be super cool and good Gonna make this uh, gonna make me vomit. And uh, speaking of vomit, uh... <laughs> okay. uh, was I doing? I was doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We decided to so, swap Dark States and Brandgate for this set. Right. So uh, it, the this card is Crimson Expeller, Grade Two. Uh, it it has uh, two skills. The first is when it attacks a Vanguard, you can Soul Charge one on Rearguard only, which is you know 
fine. And it has another skill. In Soul, you can counter blast one and put it in drop to Soul Charge one, choose one of your vanguards, and it gets power plus 10,000. I wish it could buff up something else. Yeah, buffing a counter blast to get buff your vanguard by 10,000 is not great. <laughs> like, especially because Bruce, you just wouldn't play this. I don't think you have space. There are so many other better things that you could be playing in Bruce. Correct. And then for Borrow Magnus, it's just like, you already get 10k from his own skill. But it probably takes a couple of turns for you to get his call skill. So your rear guard columns are going to be a bit weaker. That's where I would want to have things get buffed up. Yeah, most people are pretty are pretty much holding stuff for your bar for your bar barrel activation anyway, so yeah. It's like not a huge uh, huge amount of concern. Yeah, like it already gets 10k in a crit. People were just going to perfect guard it anyways if they could. Yeah. I wish it really could give two rear guard. I think that make the card a lot better. I I think their idea with doing this was like this can fit in either deck, not that it does, but they tried. Um, yeah, but like if you just if it just said choose one of your units, like yeah. that just fixes it. Definitely. Um but I can appreciate them trying to thread the needle on it even though it was a failed attempt, but you know, fire vomit always good. <laughs> Uh, speaking of vomit inducing, um, <laughs> <laughs> Diabolo's Jetliner Lenard. So this is my card for best card in the set. Um, oh, absolutely. Oh, so I... this is a grade two. Uh, it is a Bruce specific card in that it requires Final Rush and literally Bruce name. Mm -hmm. And I, we'll figure, we'll probably figure out why eventually. So it has a, it has two skills. The first is a continuous undergrad circle that if you're in Final Rush, it gets power plus five thousand, and when it would attack, it battles all of your opponent's units in a column. So front and back. Mm -hmm. So that is already a very good skill. But as in as is true of Bruce, uh, it has another skill as well. Uh, that when it, it hits, you can soul charge one. And if your vanguard is Bruce, um, you can choose up to one card from your soul and call it to an open rearguard circle. Oh boy. This is so good. Holy shit. Yeah, this card is quite nutty. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, you can. Uh, this card just does so much. This changes uh, the entire deck. This card yeah. alone. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, this card's insane. Like, would you like to have an already good rear guard just casually give you the ability to make a six attack in Bruce, potentially seven? It's so insane, honestly. And, like. How to say? Uh. The, the people you can play around it by like kind of reducing how much back row you have. Yeah. But like mm -hmm. you know you have to like constantly think about this card. It's definitely yeah. like a huge huge concern when you're playing anything. Yeah, like like some some decks really are hamstrung by this card. Magnolia being the prime example because like people are playing that uh, that tiger, the one that's like 15k base, mm -hmm. so that they can put it in the back so that this thing is easier to guard. Yeah, like, yeah. honestly, like, uh, when, I, when I when I watch people play against this deck, they're, like, uh, basically, like, people are const constructing their deck in a way where they can kind of get rid of their back row if they, if they need to. Mm hmm Because of, you know, because if your center column is full, you now have to guard two attacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, leaving your center column is real rough. Because <clears throat> then they're going to kind of do what they want and also attack a re another thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, you know, if you let your rear guard get hit, well, congratulations, you're now having a six attack coming at you. And uh, as and because this thing is 15k, it can hit, it, it will at least touch anything. Correct. Yeah. Which and is since, so annoying. You know, the, col the column attack is active on final rush, there's a strong possibility your opponent just persona rode. So it's probably 25? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it restands, so, it, so they can attempt to do this twice. Mm-hmm. It's very cool and good. And, and by the way, and none of this stuff is once per turn. Yeah. Yep. And which uh, is very cool and good. This is why I am so excited. Like this is the kind of nutty pale moon shit that I can get behind. Um. Yeah. This this card is. Uh, whew. Yeah, this card's something. Yes, it is. And such an innocuous name like Leonard. 
<laughs> Leonard sounds like the type of guy who works in accounting, not the guy who's going to... He sounds to... like a copyright attorney. Yes, exactly. Leonard the copyright attorney. Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. If uh, if anybody wants to make fan art of that, please uh, send it to us at Nexus at Night on Twitter yeah. or Instagram. No, I actually oh, follow... I actually follow a copyright attorney on YouTube named Leonard French. Oh, you weren't kidding. I thought you were just making that shit up off the top of your head. No. Oh. <laughs> Why? Why do you... <laughs> okay, whatever. Fine. <laughs> I'm not going to stop him. <sighs> and nobody will because it's Leonard. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, moving on into significantly more boring cards... We have Cardinal Drac Cardinal Draco Alvidred. Alvidred. What the fuck are these names? Uh grade two ten K. So continuous Rigar Circle. If your world is Dark Knight, gets power plus two thousand. If it's Abyssal Dark Knight, it instead gets power plus five thousand, so it's a fifteen K attacker. Okay. And then at the end of the battle attack, retire a shadow army, retire one of your opponent's rear guards. Card super good. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, it sucks it only it's 2k if you uh, with one Dark Knight, but um, you know whatever. Yeah, yeah but like, do you need Abyssal Dark Knight to be making Shadow Armies anyways? Uh, no, technically. But spoiler. <laughs> oh well, yeah, true. <laughs> I th but it would be nice, like in that early game, to have it be hitting, uh, you know, what? grade three vanguards going second. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Well, I mean. Well, I mean, if you're at grade three, you should probably already be at Abyssal Dark Knight anyways. So, I feel like... No, 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 if the point... opponent's at grade three and you're going second. Honestly, the power difference yeah. from, like, being 13 to 20 to 15 is not super relevant in this deck. No, I don't think it's that relevant at all, because if your well, opponent's on grade three and you're going second, like, you should still be at Abyssal Dark Knight by the time you're at your grade three turn. No, what I'm saying is, like, um, I'm like... like because typically an Orphist is going to be boosted mm -hmm. by fifteen k, yeah. So it's all so the if, if it were even if it were thirteen originally, it, it like so basically you want the second stage to actually hit the guard stage, which yeah. makes sense because you're you're gonna like if you're not getting it you probably just lose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, like, if you weren't hitting a Vessel Dark Knight, you were probably losing an Orphist anyways. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, this is what I'm just saying that like whatever yeah. Atlas was saying doesn't make a whole ton of sense because like forget if it. you're. If you're, like, going second, then you're opponent. Like, no, I don't... I'm not sure what scenario you were trying to come up with there. Well, he's saying, like, when you ride grade three, like, let's say... Mm -hmm. Like... I don't know. I guess I guess you would just use your Dark Knights if you had it to make it 15, so, yeah. Yeah. There, like, there's no think... reason to, like, hold one unless you're, like, only have the retire ones or something. Mm-hmm. Or the, all the counterblast ones you get denied, which does yeah. happen actually. Denying on denying on two is like pretty good now. That's true. Uh, this is one of the cards people use to kind of play around Leonard in Orphist, mm -hmm. um, because its ability to retire shadow armor trigger. See if you don't have anything to retire necessarily. Uh, basically, getting being being able to kind of like uh, just get rid of your uh, back row, it's kind yeah. of relevant. Oh, just to make it so they can't like just mm -hmm. you know hamstring them. Correct. Got it. Because uh, even though the Shadow Arms are 15, Leonard still hits. Mm-hmm. And what? then... Yeah. We have a pretty cool card for Prison. Aurora Battle Princess Perio Turquoise. Mm -hmm. Also a grade 2 10k. So, during your turn, if two of your opponent's cards are imprisoned in your prison, it gets power plus 5,000. And then, auto front row circle. When your opponent's imprisoned card is placed on rear guard circle... It gets power minus 5,000 until end of turn. This card is actually insane. Yeah. Just... This is the card that Prison needed. This card doesn't make Prison, like, OP or even... <laughs> I don't know if it makes them good, but it makes them playable. They went yep. from medium minus to medium plus. Well, they started out in the dumpster. So yeah. It took They're a while like... to get here. Prob Prison was, like, one of the horse decks in set one meta, I think, and... It is now at least playable. Yeah, I think it's like pretty middle, mid middle of the road now. I, th I think it's better than Barrow post yeah. set. I I've never really ran into them. Yeah, like, nobody actually plays them out. 
Yeah. Like, people only care about prison for horny jail jokes. Nobody actually plays the deck. I'm so glad for court banned horny jail jokes. <laughs> Good. But yeah, like, as an actual deck down, and then people, actually... Everyone was like, no, we're tired of this. <laughs> I mean, like... who who isn't tired of them, really? Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah like, minusing opponent power is pretty big. Helps you not die. And, uh, yeah, and makes getting stuff out of jail not an afterthought. Yes. Because, like, for a lot of people, it's like, okay, just give me my shit back. Thank you. And then they just continue on like normal. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I get my shit back, but it can't hit anymore. Damn it. Now you have to, like, uh, make decisions you wouldn't necessarily want to make, which is what yeah. control decks are supposed to do. Although, this set also added a bunch of main phase retires to a bunch of decks, so it's, like, probably the first thing people are going to try and hit. Yeah, Which probably. is unfortunate. Yeah. Un meh. Well, they did what they could. Oh, yeah. Like, pretty good card makes prison actually kind of playable. Mm -hmm. Will probably re retired 100% of the time unless your opponent is dumb. Or bad at the game. Or just didn't draw into the retire stuff, depending that, on what they're That's what with. I meant by bad at the game, Alice. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So, going into Keter Sanctuary, we have... Heavenly Bow of Edifying Guidance, Referazos... Jesus I know Christ, these... words. <laughs> these fucking names. It's a grade 3, 13k... If you Persona Road this turn, it gets boost and auto back row once per turn when your other unit stands by a card effect. Stand this unit. I do not care about this card. It is pretty whatever. Like, is it because like, you're probably standing Alden anyway, which is already forcing a bunch of cards, so this is just kind of like an afterthought? Or what's the... Yeah. It's vanilla what? unless you Persona ride, and then in which case the boost is like, meh. Mm -hmm. And, like, you already have Dark Strain for that. So, I mean, this card is... This, 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 yeah, this, I know this card's very good. Bummer that it's a triple R, then. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Like, I could be wrong, but I don't see the point. Yeah, I mean, I'm... Like, I'm thinking about my deck lineup right now, and it's just like, well, if I cut the four Fasados because they actually don't do anything, it's like, maybe? I guess having a slightly bigger column sometimes matters, but yeah, I don't know if this is the go-to. <laughs> so yeah, and then we have a very boring card after that. Peanut Butter Dragon. So, 13k... Grade 3. When it's placed on Vanguard Circle, you can choose a card with Blaster in its name, call it from your soul, then auto, or act Vanguard once per turn, counterblast one, retire three rear guards, retire two of your opponent's rear guards, and it gets power plus 10,000 in the critical until end of turn. Gee, I wonder wow. where we saw that before. Oh. Boring. <laughs> I have nothing else to say about this card. Let's move on. Uh, Alright. Okay. <laughs> well... It's a good thing that Stoikea once again got the coolest stuff of the set. Maybe not the best, but the coolest. Uh, so, Sylvan Horn Beast uh, Dom Dominaru, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a uh, grade 2 for, uh, or, you know, 10k. Uh, when it's placed on rear, if your vanguard is Magnolia, you can Soul Blast 1, choose one of your rear guards, and until end of turn, that unit can attack from the back row and gets plus 5k. And then also on rear, once per turn, uh, when this unit is chosen by your Vanguard's effect, this unit gets plus 5k until end of turn. Alright. Yeah, so not only can this help extend uh, turns where you either don't have a Persona ride or it's still that uh, early mid-game, uh, it, it allows you to have multiple back row attacks besides just uh, you know Magnolia themselves, and it's also a way to get back row attacks if you are being damage denied for whatever reason. Um, mm -hmm. And then aside from that, it, it has an extended life as something that gets an extra 5k. So if it's w with Magnolia's effect, it's only going to be 20k, which is kind of an awkward number. But, uh, you know. Something. It's still quite appreciated, especially in those earlier stages of the game. So, uh, and is a fantastic ghost chase target. 
Um, and then the other triple R for Stoikea is a Road Head Hunter, which is a grade one. Uh, on rear guard, if you played an order this turn, it gets plus five k. So uh, thirteen. So it's basically thirteen k all the time. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't know if uh, Zorga plays a lot of blitz orders. Like, not a lot of them keep the four of with Ghost Chase. Most of it's all main phase stuff. Um, yeah. But the other effect is when it's placed on rear, the next time you would alka magic in order and play it this turn, reduce that cost by counterblast one. So much like uh, what's her name, the the grade two, um, dandelion gal. Uh, instead of reducing by a soul blast, it reduces a counterblast by one, um, mm -hmm. which is you know less insane than the the gal, which you know makes all soul blast costs free but this is still rather nice in that you know you, you... Make a... yeah, sometimes you just spoiler. want a free grief yeah uh from what i know a lot of people who've been testing um uh zorga have an all cut headhunter really really because mm -hmm. you don't use enough counter blast in zorga soul that is, is more true. of a bottleneck yeah yeah that is true like you only occasionally use his counter blast, call something from drop, and otherwise it's just grief all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't really need a ton of counter charging. It's true. Um, th there is reminder text here that if it, if you don't have, it says a uh, reduce from total cost does not counter charge even if it becomes negative. So yeah, you can't... that's mostly for uh, weirdos arguing that somehow. I'm yeah. glad they did that though. Like this card seems like something you just hold on to for the future if Zorga becomes counter blast heavy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pick up your playset and just sit on it. I think. Um, yeah, yeah. The uh, Daima, Daima Naru is definitely a four of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From, also, from what I know, if uh, pretty much uh, I have I have some friends testing been testing Magnolia pretty avidly, um, and uh, all of them have cut um, uh, Kyono glow nipples. Glow nipples, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I ended up cutting it too, which sucks because I love the art on that. You just thing. don't use counter blast for it, honestly. You don't. Yeah. So it's uh, pretty interesting. Um, yeah, uh, but the but the this card is quite good, and then uh, yeah, headhunter is kind of the uh, almost like almost good, right? I think it's ahead yeah. of its time. You know, could be. Yeah, it could definitely become better later, depending on how counter blast costs fluctuate, or if they added, you know. Add a different alchemagic arc, like are kind of like alchemagic boss, then they could be relevant too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So moving on to the double R's, what do we got? All right. So uh, first Dragon Empire double R is um, Blaze Fist Monk Damari, and this card actually annoys me, but we'll talk about it after I read it. So it's a great three. It has an auto on rear. At the end of battle that attacked, you can counter boss one, soul boss one. Choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards, retire it, and if your vanguard is Nirvana, you can choose up to one grade zero card from your drop and call it to rear guard circle. So this is kind of what I was asking for before, where I want a way to call more trick stars, but it costs a counter blast. Yep. The problem I have with the overdress deck is it's very counter blast heavy. Oh yes. Which is what kind of makes the uh, air guard pretty good, as it does it actually kind of saves you on counter blast because it does counter charge. Yeah, but like, the deck was so counterblast heavy, and I'm and I and I do wonder if this is kind of like, uh, but you can use this, so you can. Act, but this card's still really good. Don't get me wrong, because what you can do is you can go all right, Damari, attack you right, counterblast one, soul blast one, call, uh, you could call Trickstar over this guy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then use Trickstar to battle your opponent's vanguard, and to battle that Trickstar attacks, activate Erger, to overdress on top. So that's yeah. one, two, three, four, five attacks, and this one can't, this one is guaranteed. Yep. Okay, but uh, how many? So that's. So it's Damari fifteen or Damari thirteen. Oh no, not so much that. I mean, how much counter blast and soul are you spending on that entire? So you're spending, you're spending three soul. Two, you're spending three soul, uh, and no, effectively no counter blast. Yeah. Yeah. You do but need one open to start with, but. Yeah, well, yeah. So if you, so, it's like kind of like two counter blocks play, but you can definitely do this at least. You know, like the your first persona right turn for sure. Well, assuming you can find Damari right and mm -hmm. Nurger, and then your last attack can be literally any overdress unit, right? Yeah. But you're so, hoping yeah. for Urger. Um, well, you want Urger in hand, right, to 
to overdress on top of the trick star. Yeah. So yeah, you're using a lot of soul, but could could be good. So, okay. This card's kind of neat. Uh, like I said, upside down cost counter blast, but uh, soul is uh, is becoming more and more of a bottleneck as we go forward. Mm-hmm. So you kind of need two counter blasts for this play, which is a fair bit, because you want to assume you want to activate Nirvana. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. All right. Any uh, any other? Uh... Nothing on uh, nothing on the monk. All right, I hope, I hope, yeah, so the the monk has some stuff going on. It's a it's a pretty good card, but I'm just kind of mad about some small things. Yeah. So the next mm-hmm. card is a Stealth Dragon Togachi Rashi. Uh, so it's a Grade One Seven K. Hate it already. Awkward. And when it's discarded from hand during your turn, you can put this card in your soul. So you, I guess they want you to discard this to either effects for like uh, I don't know, writing up or you know what have you. I don't know, I think card Riding up, Nirvana skill, I guess Overlord, technically. It is bizarre to me this card is a double R. Yeah. Okay, like, I, I understand that it's, like, Soul is, you said Soul is becoming more of a bottleneck, meaning that this would be helpful. But do you really want to run four cards in your deck where you're like, this is not meant to be used as right. a unit? I will say this. Grade ones in Dragon Empire are were atrocious up to this point. Okay. Pretty sure they still are atrocious. Right, right. But you actually have great ones you want to run, as of this said, which we'll talk about more later. But yeah. mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> so, uh, the, the, so this card, despite yeah, despite not really having great ones, just still doesn't meet the requirements. I don't think. It's weird to me. It's a double R. So yeah, yeah. makes sense. It's okay, we have another crappy grade one to talk All about. Right, though. So now, now we'll talk about the uh, the Eugene support Drag Ritter Idaris. Uh, so this is a grade one. 5k and so if your post regards are trying during this turn you can counter blast one and perform one of the following you can either have it get plus 10k or you can put it into soul and choose one of your opponents great two or greater rear guards and retire it so the second effect is one that i mentioned in set one that eugene would really like is basically a rear guard that can kind of like go off the you know go off like the eugene retire you can rest it for eugene's skill counter blast one put it into soul Gaining you a soul, which is really important, and then retiring one of your opponents, another one of your opponents' rear guards. <laughs> so that's kind of what I wanted out of set one for Eugene. It's a card like this. Out of set one, and yet here we are but, in set two. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but so people are still playing Eugene for some reason because they think it's funny, um, or you know, you max rarity it because it's like, you know, eighty. Like, well, I guess the PGs are expensive, but you know, because it's cheap as shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you could just do whatever you want. But I think this card is like. Uh, this card is fine. Mm-hmm. Eh. It's also like a 15k booster, which is somewhat relevant for reaching decent numbers. Yeah, although uh, if we're going off that combo match set, you're not going to be using it as a booster. But there is still that option, at least. Um, it kind of sucks that you... It has to be there to see the retire happen. It can't be like... You know, you, you you do your retire with Eugene and then use his skill to call a new board, and now it's just sitting there as a 5 Damari is pretty good. Uh, yeah. Ida, Idaris is uh, fine. And uh, I don't think the Togachirashi is, really matters. Um, so now for Dark States. So I guess we'll start with this Ice Skater. Uh, Cleave Muddler. It's a great two. Uh, when it attacks, if your Vanguard is Barrel Magnus, you can discard a card from your hand. It gets power plus 5k, and if your soul has 10 or more cards, you counter charge one. That would be cool, so except for the card, cost. <laughs> Bar Magnus is a deck that is pretty low on hand most of the time. Yeah. And so just keep shoving more discard cards on it. Yeah, I don't get it either. It is infuriating. Like, it is super not worth it for a deck that already consistently runs with, like, four my or less cards in hand. Yeah, it's, uh... Yeah, like obviously your hand's like pretty fine up until you like you need a soul charge, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like up. But once you soul charge up, your hand is pretty small. They, uh, yeah. they, they ought to have just made it a soul blast toss. Like that would have been about as like an awkward decision as having to discard. Like, uh, no, discarding is probably worse. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like it, it still would have been a cost versus, you know dooming you to a life of six damage by making you discard. 
Yeah. Or deck. Honestly, but... it's, if just make it gain 5k and have no other effects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just 10 or more soul gets 5k. Cool, great, thanks, bye. <laughs> that would make it better, for sure. Yeah, this card is like actual trash. Alright, let's move on then. So the next card is Lycia Wildmaster Darius. So this is a Sun Pale Moon card of some kind. Uh, so it's a grade 2, and it has a Rearguard Circle ability. When it attacks, if your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3, you can Counter Blast 1, Soul Charge 1, and if this unit gains power plus 5,000 until end of battle. If you have 3 or more other Rearguards, it gets plus 10,000 instead of plus 5,000. Like, okay. Who's this for? Brace, I, I think? It's Just... generic, but like... I can't see a situation where Borrow Magnus actually has four rear guards. Bruce actually plays nothing but cards that say Final Rush on it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I could, like, maybe see you teching this into Bruce as, like, an early 28k beater for that pre-Final Rush turn. I don't know why you would use this in Borrow Magnus, a deck that already counterblasts a ton and probably can't actually call four rear guards. Yeah, this card's pretty whack. Like... I appreciate that it's generic, at least. Maybe it'll get better with set three. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, or whatever that ride line ends up being in set three. Besides yeah, just what... more stuff. Yeah, that's what I mean. But, like, I could see situations where you could maybe play it. Like, if Borrow Magnus had any actual advantage, or if you were doing something weird with Bruce... Guess we'll find out. So speaking of cards they'll never see play, uh, Diabolos, Madonna, Mabel. Uh, it's a great one. And I, I, I think this won't see play mostly due to the quality of... Actually, no, it, this could see play. I'm lying. But I think... Uh, As like a two I think it's, People have been cutting it like down. It's been going like straight down. Anyway, we'll read it out first. Because it seems like it could be okay. So it's a great one, 7K. The 7K is a really important thing here. Auto one rear guard when this boosts the vanguard. If you are in final rush, counter boss one, choose one of your opponents, or choose one of your vanguards, and it gets triple drive into on turn. So you say counter blasting for an extra drive check. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I saw some people start lists on a, where, where they played, you know, like um, uh, like two of them. Yeah. And they've kind of like went down in stock. So this is kind of like a one of like bullet that you just mm -hmm. like oh, maybe I'll soul charge it and be able to call it out with, like, uh, Leonard or something. Yeah. Let's see. See, and also this is a problem for, like, mirror matches because it's a target for Leonard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see, like, not actually playing this card. I don't think you need the extra advantage that badly. Well, if you had, like, a protobulb on the side, right? Mm-hmm. Then you could, like, Leonard, if Leonard hit, like, let's say they had a back row, like, Leonard, like, pull this out, right? And, like, let's if they only had one back row where you can't really set up any, like, fancier plays, yeah. you could, like, pull this out, attack with the other rear guard, attack with vanguard, like, activated effect, triple drive, stand, your, stand rear guards, attack, portable effect, shove Mabel back and soul, grab a card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, on, on paper, it seems so amazing, especially in a deck that, while it does counterblast, it's not as... Uh... You know, hamstrung by it as something like uh, Barrow Magnus. And, like, what, what's really counterblasting in Bruce? Protobulb and. Eden and this card. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, like, Fist yeah. Colossus, I guess. They're, they're not playing it in the modern list. Yeah, I was going to say, Fist Colossus was one of the first things to go, I thought. Mm hmm. Yeah. At least I'm not. I'm, at least Pro Proof's not playing it, so I assume nobody is. Yeah, I haven't really <laughs> thought about my Bruce list yet, so. Yeah, but that's kind of. Uh, but I figured, there. yeah, but I figured like I'd probably be cutting this Colossus too, honestly. Yeah. So cards, cards, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just like it's, it's a lot of. It's a, a nice, it's a nice like bonus, but I don't think it's uh, you know, a mm -hmm. central part of the strategy. You're just like and oh, like nope. the le thing leaving back row behind Vanguard in the mirror is uh, yeesh. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to make it, so it's like pretty situational. Mm -hmm. I mean, and even in that case, knowing that you're playing in the mirror match, you just don't call yeah, it. If you can't get rid of it, you just don't call it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, you still want to just not see it if you know if you if you can help it. Yeah. Well, that's the 
the rub with card games, you will run into run into stuff you don't want when you don't need it. Yep. And, and uh, that's Matt's entire life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would never. And uh, what do, what do we got next? Speaking of things we don't want. Uh, Aurora Battle Princess Dairy Violet. So, grade 2 10k. Auto, when placed on Guard Circle, if one or more of your opponent's cards are in prison, Soul Blast 1, choose one of your units. It cannot be hit by a grade 2 or lower attack until end of battle. What the hell is this? Get this out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's stop. Mist, mist in 2021? <laughs> yeah. Let's take a quick second to assess how many decks play grade 3 rear guards right now. One, I like that this card is completely useless against Bastion. It's really cool. Yeah, like completely useless against Bastion. Bruce, I assume you still have... Uh... Oh, they're still playing um, Marjorie for sure. Yeah. yeah, I assume you still have Marjorie. Uh, I don't... Zorga, you'll probably end up calling a Zorga or Hydro Ram at some point. Uh, let's see. Unsure if you still play Valiant, but probably... Uh, Magnolia now has a grade 3 that does stuff. Also Soul Blast, it's Soul Blast 1. I guess it's not too horrible. I mean, prison, but... prison has ample soul just because the Prison Order Soul charges 3. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, but like, it does nothing else that helps you win. It just keeps you from losing. Yeah, like... It keeps you from losing and it doesn't even do that half the time just because <laughs> a good majority of decks have grade 3 rear guards that they actually want to play. And like... Especially with, like, ar the art is so freaking cool. It doesn't even stop, uh, Leonard, if you have a back row. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Choose one of your units. <laughs> Very well. cool and good. Woof. Yeah, there are, like, so many situations that just negate this card's benefit. Like, at that point, it, might, it should just be an actual perfect guard. Yeah, just man. Say, like, Sol just say, like, Soul Blast 1, a unit can't be hit. Like, you already have to have two... A card in prison. Your soul blasting one. I don't see why it only says grade two or lower. I I do not envy the man or woman that pulls this as an SP, and there will be someone out there. Big oof. <laughs> Big oof yeah. indeed. So um, yeah, this card is uh quite bad. The next one isn't so bad though. Yeah. So we have Cardinal Noid Thumberino. So. It is grade 1 8k. When it boosts a shadow army, you may have this unit get plus 15,000. And if you do, retire all rear guards in the same column as this unit and draw one. I just can't take any unit with the name Noid in its name. Do, do, <laughs> do you think of the thing from Domino's too? Oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Yeah, I, so it, it makes a 38 column and then turns it into a draw, which... You know, that's doing something with the token, at least. Yeah. Also, it gets out of the way against Leonard. Sure does. Gets I... the whole column out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, like, decent. I don't think uh, Orphis has a ton of grade ones it cares about regardless, so I'm pretty sure you would just play this because there's room. Mm -hmm. So, hey, that's good. Yeah, good on them for... Yeah. I guess if you have, like, this Bulbul Mine and the Grade 2, you can, like, get rid of most of your board by the end of your turn. Well, that's cool. And then and then just make it, make Leonard not as good or threatening. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. And then another card you probably don't want to play, Gluttonic Monster Malnorm. Who uh, drew this? <laughs> I'm serious. This literally looks Why like looking at <laughs> this looks like a doodle in my fifth grade notebook. I swear, just with colors. I don't know what I'm it. looking at. Still don't know. Yeah, yeah. The longer uh, I look, the more confusing it gets. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like in Brantgate, where everything is like kaiju's and you know Link Joker, her stuff, and then we just have this thing. Mm -hmm. Very cool. But yeah, it's skill as act once per turn. Discard a set order to counter charge one. Is that worth it, or probably not? Because you already but... have the the kaiju thing to yeah. counter. You already have Bulba Mine, and I think like for Orphist, your orders actually do things, and for Prison, you probably just want to avoid playing pr too many Prison orders. Hmm. Checks out. Like, like you probably just play the one to draw off of your ride line, and then that's it. 
maybe two in a situation where you use more than like five soul blasts in the game. Okay. So yeah, there's like no reason to be using this card. Also, Bulbul Mine gives you soul because it like Goes puts into itself soul. into soul. So like, okay, I can't see a situation where Prison is playing more than one Prison order, and where Orphus actually wants to discard its set orders. Okay, I'm I'm telling Bushira this for their own benefit. You cannot afford to print shitty cards for Brantgate. Everyone else, no, they can. Just because they do it doesn't mean they can afford to. Oh, no, they can definitely afford to. Jesus get wrecked. Christ. Get wrecked, Brankate. <sighs> I mean, it seems like all of the, like, generic cl- uh, nation cars are kind of bad so far. Some of them are. The, the What they did for Stoikea is, is okay. I will get to that in a bit. Yeah. But, uh... I mean, I guess, like, uh, the grade 2 that potentially gains 10k might see some use in the future, I guess. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't see a, I don't see a huge reason to be using this particular card. Anyways, Kinder Sanctuary, where we have the Dragon Dragon, uh, Heavenly Flight Dragon, Prideful Dragon. It's a lot of it dragon. A great th- yeah, a grade three, thirteen k. When it attacks, if you have four or more grade three rear cards, so this includes itself. Uh, Counter Blast one, Soul Blast one, draw a card. If you Persona Road, you can get have it gain 5k and a crit instead of drawing. I mean... Well, it's... Int- okay, well, at least that second thing is till end of turn, so you can, like, crit pressure f- with Bastion. Mm-hmm. So... Eh. And it's also not... I mean, it's not once per turn. You could have, have it gain 10k and two crits. That's true. I don't know. What do you think? Your silence speaks volumes. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> like, eh. It's like a budget Alden, I guess. Sure. I don't know. I, I just don't know what to think about this card, honestly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's not as bad. It's better than the triple R. Sure. It's we- That's a weird thing to say. But uh, it's happened before, that's for sure. The draw is nice, I guess, if you, uh... Yeah, like, <laughs> like I said, budget Alden. Yeah. Whatever. Like, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Anyways. And now for the, how the hell is this a double R? Stellar a- Razor Angel. Grade 2, 10k. When it attacks, if your damage zone has no face-up cards, it gets power plus 5,000 until end of battle. Oh, this, oh could this, make a more boy card? This has big <sighs> common energy. Yes, it does. I mean, cool in something like Hexa Orb, where you, you know, counterblast a ton, but, uh... I have other things I can be playing in Hexa Orb. Yeah, it especially feels bad being a double R, because you're like, dude, come on. <laughs> like, this card sucks, moving on. Yep. Uh, we have Diaglass Sorceress, a uh, grade 1 8k for, uh, Hexa Orb. So, when... Placed, if your Vanguard is Hexa Orb or Pentagleam, Counterblast 1, discard a card, look at top 2 from your deck, choose up to 2 card, unit cards, call them to rear guard, put the rest on top of your deck in any order. Oh, that's good! Isn't it? Yes. But, so, you either plus 1, or, like, worst, worst worst case, you discarded a card to put 2 triggers on top of your deck, which is not bad. But... Like, most likely, it's probably a wash where you call one, put one back. Yeah. And, like, best case scenario, you just straight up plus calling two units. So, mm-hmm. it it's hard to be in a situation where this card is really all that bad. Minusing in Hexa Orb feels like shit if you end up having to put both cards back on top. But, mm-hmm. hey, double trigger. Yeah. Although, that would suck if it's turn two, because you only get the one. Um... Yeah. Now, I think your most scenarios you're looking to at least call one thing to at least make it a wash. Right, of course. But, you know, it was something you guys needed for sure. Yeah. It's a shame that the ride line says counterblast one draw a card. They should have just let you guys have a 
for so many so many complaints about that ride line. The ride line is so bad. I'm actually considering playing Blaster Dark instead. <laughs> <laughs> but we can talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Good hexa orb support. Mm-hmm. Who would have um, guessed? There's uh, we have a deep emotion maiden uh, Urhula. It's uh, grade one 8k, and this is very good generic support in either nation. So continuous on rear. Uh, mm-hmm. When you would exchange or move rear guards during the main phase, you can also move them along rows. Which I'll get to that when we get to the commons. Um, and then the other effect is uh, continuous on rear gear units in front of this unit cannot be chosen by your opponent's effects. Um, so just give the thing in front of it resist. Hey, nice and free. Good stuff. Um, this is probably less useful in Zorga, but it's very, very useful in Magnolia. Um, I see this at like threes and fours of in most decks, deck lists that I'm seeing mm-hmm. for it. Um, and this only gets better with time as uh, we get more uh, card effects that benefit from being in the back that you eventually want to move to the front. One thing that sucks about calling stuff in the back row behind Magnolia was if you put it behind Vanguard, it was stuck back there. Now that doesn't matter. You can just go move it in an L shape. It's back to the front row. So good stuff. Love this thing. Anything to say about it? None too much. Yep. Yeah, no, it kind of speaks for itself. Yeah, there's also a regurgitation. I'm for... not sure you play this card though. Yeah, uh, it kind of kind of depends on the meta. Like again, we're getting a whole lot of like extra removal options. So, like, there is an argument to be made that like the decks that would most likely get rid of your stuff could get rid of this and then just get rid of whatever's in front of it fairly easily. Mm-hmm. Um, you you mostly want to use it at least in uh, Magnolia for that lateral movement though, right? Then for the resist stuff. Uh, there's regurgitation from the underworld, which I've been calling Hell Vomit because why wouldn't you? Uh, it's a normal order. You can play it with a counter blast one, soul blast one. You choose any one of any player's rear guards, retire it. And then you choose up to one card with the same grade from your drop and call it to rare. If this was part of Alchemagic, you can call two things instead of one. Um, so See, this card's like super specific. Yes, it is. Like I do not like the fact that it has to be the exact same rear guard or the exact same grade. I feel like I'd play one of this and maybe it would come up. Yeah, in, like, either, I'd, in either deck, I'd honestly. See... Like, I could see two in Zorga just because, like, the retired utility is very useful. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I wouldn't even... I don't think I would play this card in Magnolia. Uh, you, I have it at one just as, like, a removal option. I, you could... I, I do want to say, like, I appreciate the design decision to make it usable in both decks. Mm-hmm. Like, I like the way they're designing orders for Stoicaea, where you get, like, half the benefit for playing it in the wrong deck, but you still get a benefit. Mm-hmm. Like, gives you options. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it's it, it's obviously meant to be used in Zorga, but you you more use it as targeted removal in Magnolia if you decide to play it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially now that you have started running grade threes, this against the um, the the Bastion matchup isn't quite as awkward. Whereas before. In, in a set one meta, if you had this, you'd be calling other copies of, of Magnolia, which you're like, ugh, gross. But there's uh, more to do with this, and I think uh, it's a good card, and I think it only gets better as we get more options for calling <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, there's also a big meme against Bastion, though, trying to set up a grade three in your drop zone to call. Yeah. I mean, one way you can do that is with the next order, which is Wild Intelligence. Uh, it's a grade zero order, which, weird. Um, you play it with a Counter Blast. You mill three cards from the top of your deck, choose up to one card with the same grade as your Vanguard or lower from your drop and call it to rear. If your Vanguard is Magnol- uh, Magnolia, you call two instead of one. What do you think about this card, Alice? I love it. Uh <laughs> This yeah, thing... I, I think I think you just jam for this. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. this thing is a three or four of <coughs> easy because uh, what I see people doing is they're playing four of this card and just playing the um, Zorka ride line into Magnolia. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you now run enough orders where 
Because you run four ghost chase, three to four to this thing. No, no, you can't get ghost chase back with the grade two, so you don't. Even, you, they're not, like, I don't, they're not even playing ghost chase. Oh, I still have ghost chase just for the recycling. Yeah, they're of... playing like uh, some of the like uh, other orders at grade two. Uh, the... uh like the ones that because you're milling a lot, yeah. so they're playing the one that gets like power mm -hmm. for milling, and they're playing the ones that like uh, buff your whole back row, but you can't move them anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. That there's like uh there's like a grade one where oh are you talking about the grade one that's fifteen k and then uh can't be called anywhere but back row center? No no, then... no 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 like the the grade two orders like a uh, nectar of sensation. The fruit. Oh, fruit that one. Yeah. yeah. And like the fruit order. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I, th that is one way to do the deck. I I think there are now multiple ways to play in uh, in both Bruce and this and. A lot of decks, actually, that I think um, maybe I'll end up coming to the same conclusion. I don't know. I've only, like, lightly tested stuff. Yeah, it sucks that so. the uh, Grade 2 and the Zorga Ride line can't get back Ghost Chase because it only gets back normal orders. Yeah. Well, that yeah. sucks. Oh, well. Uh, but ha having Ghost Chase able to recycle things like, like, I'll, 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 like, get a Magnolia back with this or with Hell Vomit or whatever and then bounce it and then rewrite mm -hmm. next turn. Like, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, this thing is mwah, so good. I don't it, I don't know it if It might be you... the best order. It might be the best order printed yet, honestly. I think so. I think it's a contender. I don't know if you use it in Zorga, but I know Zorga likes smilling. So. I don't think it's worth it in Zorga. Not worth it in I Zorga? I don't think you have space in Zorga. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's fair. It's also just not worth it, because the Counter Blast is kind of low value when you're only getting one unit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I think you still would rather just find Hendrina to mill. Mm -hmm. And you also have Agony. That deck also has Agony, which lets you mill a bunch. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, th this thing was uh, really what Magnolia needed, especially, like, Magnolia has card advantage problems and problems coming back from having their board blown up, either by that order from Cater Sanctuary or whatever other uh, wacky shenanigans come up next. But... Uh, I think this is kind of just what the doctor ordered. Uh, so oh, yeah. that being the end of the double R's, we now come to any rares or commons that interest us, no matter what uh, nation they happen to be a part of. Uh, did anybody want to uh, start uh, start us off? Oh, I have a bunch. Uh, yes, uh, go nuts. Go for it. Yeah, so probably the most important one for prison was moments of securing 24... Aurora Battle Princess's 24-hour coverage is a grade 2 or normal order, so you play it with Soul Blast 1. If your opponent's hand has 4 or more cards in it, your opponent imprisons a card from hand. Then, if there are 3 or more cards in prison, you give one of your units 5,000. Nice. Just... Yeah, this card's quite good. So, so yep. just being able to rip a card out of hand is very helpful. Also, this name is a complete <laughs> meme. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm gonna have this so much fun. This might be the running. longest card name ever made. It actually might. I don't know. Like 99th generation dimensional Ro great dire. What was dire's full name? 99th generational dimensional robo commander great dire earth. Yeah, I think this one is actually longer than that. Well done. Congratulations, we've done very cool. Great dire earth. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, gives a column plus 5k, which is huge, because Prison had power problems in set one, and just, you know, ripping a card from hand is always good. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Another one is Whimsical Machine Beast Bug Motor. Why is it whimsical? Uh, but it's a great one. If one or less cards are imprisoned in your prison, you can rest it and imprison something from your opponent's drop. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Another card that's probably necessary just for, like, potentially getting rid of... Or filling the prison up with garbage so your opponent can't call anything from it. Or, it, yeah. Well, they can, but it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Uh, there's also Aurora Battle Princess Mel Horizon. It is a grade 3. Uh, when it attacks a vanguard, you counterblast 1. Uh, imprison the opponent's rear guard and gets power plus 5,000. It's an 18k attacker. I, that's <laughs> actually all I have to say about that card. It's, it's an enough. ATK. Uh, hang 
There was like one more. All right, Aurora Battle Princess Birit Canary. So it's a grade two on play. Choose one of your opponents in prison card and drop it. Nice. Yeah, so like actual removal. It's like an extra step. That said, I don't know if you actually play this card just because like, it might be worthwhile to just keep trying to mass in prison and try to beat your opponent with raw power. Hmm. So, I don't know. I guess we'll test with and without and see what happens, but I feel like right now, cards like Mel Horizon are probably more important. There was also like a grade one common that got 5k if there was something in the prison, which is huge because it means you can consistently make above 28k columns now. Oh, that's good. It's more pressure. Yeah. Aurora Battle Princess loaded Azalee, so yeah. Uh, during Battle Boosted, if two or more cards are imprisoned, it gets power plus 5,000. So, like, Brant Gate actually has consistent power columns now. Or Good. Prison has consistent power columns now. The deck's actually real. And it only, oh, yeah. it only took them two sets <laughs> and a trial deck. Uh, I, I only have three that, like, really catch my attention. Otherwise, we'll be sure. here all day. Uh, I'll start off with a real simple one. So, Shooting Mutant, mutant Bullet Wasp. Is a 10k grade two that can intercept from the back row. Uh, right. Yeah, so so you can just stick this in the back. Uh, it ends up being one of your targets, and then <laughs> intercept with it when it uh, outlives its usefulness. There's coffin shooting, which I think you can use in either deck. Uh, it's a 10k grade two. Act from drop once per turn, which I don't quite understand how that works. But uh, you can soul blast one, bind an order card from your drop, and then call this to an open rear. Um, yeah, that card's insane. Yeah, so it just turns, like, either deck, it, it's a warm body, and especially for something like uh, Magnolia, which has that white tiger that needs a full board to function, mm -hmm. this can help uh, facilitate that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd use this a lot in Zorga, just because you want those orders to stay in drop so that you can alchemagic them. Uh, but it's a thing you can use. And then lastly... <laughs> Uh, Sylvan Horn Beast Iliata, which is a grade 3 elephant, uh, on rear, and, uh, when it attacks, if you have two or more units, uh, that are in front of this unit, this gets plus 5k until end of that battle, and then if you have three or more units, so just Vanguard and two things in front, you Soul Charge, which, uh, we have a Soul Engine now, finally, which means that oh, yeah. all of the Soul Blast costs from before now have something to power it. Uh, which means that this card is incredibly important. Uh, at the same time, if you use Magnolia's effect on it, or the, the Fox's effect, the triple R, it hits 23, which means it can hit over a trigger. So, very cool. Yes, very important card. Uh, a lot of decks I've been seeing them at 2 or 3 of, probably not 4 of, but hey, also it's something you can call with Hell Vomit against, uh, against uh, Bastion, so... Yeah, I just have a few cards here. Have so, at it. the first one is a uh, Blaze Maiden Aruna. Uh, it's a grade one uh, that when it boosts a grade zero unit, it gets power plus five thousand. Uh, this can help Trickstar hit eighteen. Uh, mm -hmm. So instead of just being like a thirteen k attack with a random uh, grade one, because you do need something behind it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. It kind of sucks that this doesn't go away, but you don't actually have a lot of options for uh, for that. <laughs> go away is in like go into soul or something, or like disappear. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, the the Urger in front of it will be hard to bully, so that's okay. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, it was just a okay card. Um, and then another card is a Hellblast Full Dive, which is a grade 3 order. Oh, uh, yeah. Play with Counterblast 1, and uh, you draw a card, choose a card from your hand, call it to Rearguard Circle. Then if you're in Final Rush, all of your front row units get power plus 10,000. So it can just be another big kind of boost to Final Rush turn. Mm -hmm. uh, could be Overkill. Um, but, you know, is something to think about. And then the last card, which I think is the best of the cards I'm going to read, is uh, Surveillance Gear Dober. Uh, it has an auto in rear. At the end of the battle, you should boost it. If you're in Final Rush, you can put it into Soul. Choose one of your units to get power plus 10,000. So it gets out of the way so you can use Leonard's effect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And give something 10,000. You know, <laughs> all it gets to. Oh, oh yeah. my god. Yeah. I actually still have a couple more for Keter. Oh my god. Sure. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, so there was four Mupo Chosen Knights, so it's a grade three order. 
Karen, last one, Fold, last knight? one. Sorry? Yeah. Oh, Chosen. I see. Yeah. yeah. So, perform all of the effects according to the number of grade threes you have. Uh, two or more, one of your units gets 5k. Three or more, draw a card. Four or more, one of your vanguards gets drive plus one. Hello. So, Basically, awesome. Cower Blast 1, Soul Blast 1 to plus 2. Hmm. Or plus, I guess plus 1 since you're using the order. Yeah, but uh, the best way to plus is to get extra drive checks, so. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and then there was Knight of Subtlety O-Wine, so. Uh, grade 2 10k, when placed on rear guard circle, if your vanguard's Hexa Orb, Soul Blast 1, look at top 2, choose up to 2 of them for among them, put them on top of your deck in any order, put the bo rest on bottom in any order, so if you actually manage to see two triggers, you can put them back on top. And then when your drive check reveals a trigger unit, you can counter plus one, give it plus 10k. You're don't never know. doing that, right? Probably not. Gotcha. Like, I don't know when the hell you're gonna use that, because you need counter blasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. Oh, it's it, it's so you can use all your counter blasts. So what's her name <laughs> and have the extra five k? <laughs> all right. Um. So I guess uh, the last question: uh, Who wins the set? Who loses the loses the set? It's a tough one. Hmm. I'm gonna go I'm... with uh, Bruce. Bruce wins. <laughs> yeah, like Bruce wins. If we're talking in terms of improving since set one, like prison is huge. Yeah, prison improved a lot. Uh, Granted, it needed a lot, but... Yeah, but I think it more or less got what it needed, which is good. Like, it has actual power columns now. It has ways to build up prisons that don't rely on just nuking the board. Mm -hmm. Like, prison is a real deck now. Yeah, it, yeah it's all... If... Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, Orphist also has things to do with the tokens besides just make tokens, too. Yeah, but being a free attack deck is pretty cringe. Yeah. Also, like, Hexa Orb also got some pretty decent stuff with mm -hmm. Olwait and then uh, Di Diaglass. Being able to actually plus in the deck is huge, even if it is kind of costly. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, the big losers are uh, Barrow Magnus and Zorga. Yeah. And Eugene, I mean, Zorga, has the Eugene, Zorga does have the shark that... I don't think Atlas talked about. Yeah, but I don't think it's... Uh... I don't think it's enough to matter. Like, it's good, it's helpful, but it's... Uh... Here, it's fine. really marginal improvements, honestly. Yeah. Like, Zorga seems like it's in a holding pattern right now. I don't think it gets worse, but it also doesn't definitely doesn't get better. Yeah, yeah so... I, I like where Magnolia is at post the set, though. Yeah. Me yeah. Too. So, Fleet Eater, it was grade 2, 10k... When it attacks, if you auto magic something this turn, you can soul blast. Uh, he gets plus five, and uh, battle door still. So, uh, to those who don't know, battle door is if when the opponent would guard, they have to put two or more cards down at the same time. I mean, but like since shields are so small, it's typically happening anyway. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you attack with him unboosted while the opponent hasn't taken anything on damage yet, uh. That is like the the idea is to skirt as close to the line as possible. Well, obviously, yeah. Mm -hmm. But with persona riding, that's never going to happen, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, I think once you get to a persona ride turn, you just want to make it as big as possible and try to force as many cards as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But still, it's an option. So. You are allowed to put it in your deck. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I also just love the art on it, where uh, yeah. the. There was a card called God Eating Zombie Shark however many years ago, and they're like, let's what bring are... that shit back. What? Hell yeah. yeah. That card was sweet. <laughs> it was. Uh, so, if there's anything you thought we missed, uh, you can you can find us on Twitter or Instagram at Nexus at Night. Yell at us if you want. We'll maybe answer. We're in the no, mood. don't yell at me. Don't yell at him, but I'm kind of the one who's taking most of the abuse on the chin. So, <laughs> you know, it's me. Uh... And then uh, you can also, if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash nexus at night. Get a whole ass bonus show every week, uh, $5 or more tier, or if it's uh, if you donate $10 a month, uh, you get thanked like uh, Darren, Cole, and Josh. And uh, where can they find you guys? You can find me on Twitter at Wiggums, 2 gs 2 zs You can find me at Plasma Eclipse. And then you can find me at Atlas Novak, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I am on the... Burbank Comedy Festival next month. 
So uh, stay tuned on my uh, Twitter for that. And uh, I also have a new show. Let's see when the time you guys are hearing this. Generation Dan coming out uh, tomorrow, Thursday, the 24th. So I will uh, tweet that out on the Nexus at Night Twitter. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And until then, I was Atlas. I'm still Matt. I'm Root Beer. And have a good night, everybody.